Yeah, where is everybody today? All right, so this is day what? dose what? of section 3.9, related rates. Um, <laughs> now, I, I just want to show this slide because this is kind of the, the rundown of how to do each one of these problems, these related rates problems. The first thing you want to do is read the problem carefully, and I think you know, that's whatever, like you wouldn't read it carefully. But read the problem carefully. Read it two, three times if you need to. Okay, don't just read it once. Second thing, draw a diagram if possible. If one's not already provided for you, I and mean, even if one is provided for you in the book when you're doing your homework, it might be a good idea to redraw it on your paper. <coughs> Um, so draw a diagram if possible. Again, if there is one drawn in the book, it might be a good idea to redraw it so you can kind of cut right on it in the uh, in your in your notebook, right? In your uh, when you're doing your homework. Third thing, introduce notation. Hi. Who? Um, introduce notation. Talk about what you know. Talk about what you don't know. Is one of the things you know a rate? Okay, use the correct notation accordingly. Fourth thing, express the given information in the required rates in terms of derivatives. And fifth thing, this is the important piece here, somehow create an equation that relates the two rates that you have and that you're looking for together. Okay. Some, write an equation that relates the various quantities of the problem. If necessary, use the geometry of the situation to eliminate one of the variables by substitution. Uh, use the chain rule to differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to t. Substitute the given information in the resulting equation. Solve for that unknown rate. Here we go. Last one that we got here. Let's read carefully. A man walks along a straight line path at a speed of four feet per second. A searchlight is located on the ground 20 feet from the path and is kept focused on that man. At what rate is the searchlight rotating when the man is 15 feet from the point on the path closest to the searchlight? Let's read that again. A man walks along a straight line path at a speed of four feet per second. A searchlight is located on the ground 20 feet from the path and is kept focused on to the man. At what rate is the searchlight rotating when the man is 15 feet from the point on the path closest to the searchlight? Okay, let's start defining what we know and what we don't know. Uh, it might be a good idea for you to copy that diagram onto your papers. I was going to make this diagram from scratch, but I, I, I kind of like their image. I thought that was good. His arm is kind of like weirdly behind him. I don't know. Um, he's got the Mr. Robert bald spot. Maybe that's just, just shiny hair. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's define what we know and what we don't know. A man walks along a straight line path at a, four, a, a speed of four feet per second. What is that? So, a rate, right? So we should be able to describe it using the d dt notation, right? If it's a rate, we should be able to describe it using that derivative notation. So what is it? What rate are we talking about? What's that? Speed per second, right? Yeah, but it's the man, right? And if I call his change in position x, the rate of change of his position is going to be dx dt, right? dx dt. So we know that dx dt is 4 feet per second. 
Okay, let's keep going. A searchlight is located on the ground 20 feet from the path. Okay, there's our 20. Count it, call it Y, whatever you want to call it. At what rate is the searchlight rotating? Okay, that's what we're looking for, right? How do we express that? Now, if it's a rate, we should be able to describe it in the derivative notation, right? So how do I describe the rate at which the searchlight, searchlight is rotating? What, what variable am I really looking for in this diagram? Theta, right? So the rate at which the light is rotating is going to be the rate of change of the angle over time. So we are looking for d theta dt. That's what we're looking for, d theta dt. When the man is 15 feet from the point on the path closest to the searchlight. So basically, when this is 15. Okay, with that given information, how do I relate theta with x? What type of, now, with these um, right triangles, it's always good to think about Pythagorean. Can I do anything with Pythagorean here? Uh, I, I don't think so, because theta is nowhere part of, it's not a part of Pythagorean, right? But I've got a theta within a right triangle. Okay, alarm should be going off. If I've got a theta within a right triangle, maybe I should use some sort of trig. What trig ratio will relate theta with x? Well, what is x? It's the opposite, right? So that narrows it down. I'm not going to be using cosine, because that's the adjacent and hypotenuse. That does not deal with opposite. So I've got to either pick tangent or sine. What am I going to pick? Tangent, because I've got that 20. I know that the searchlight is 20 feet from the path. So I'm going to pick tangent. Tangent's going to be the, the key. Tangent's going to be the puzzle piece here. Tangent theta is equal to... Tangent theta is going to be equal to the opposite x over the adjacent 20. Is, is that 20 ever going to change? No. So I can input that right now. Right? That, that is not going to change within this scenario. That, that 20 is going to stay the same. And when things are going to stay the same, you can input it before you start taking derivatives. OK. Um, Let's say, and I'm going to go right up as, I, as I see it on my paper here. Um, before I take the derivative here, I'm going to multiply that 20 over to the other side. 20 times tangent theta is equal to x. That's going to make that derivative a little bit easier to take. Now let's apply the derivative. Now let's apply the derivative. Okay, um, that 20 is the is uh, just multiplying to tangent, and we don't have to do product rule because it's not like 20x or something like that. It's just a 20, it's just a coefficient. So this is going to be 20 times, anybody remember the derivative of tangent? Oh, you're close. Secant squared. Secant squared theta. But what do I have to attach to secant squared theta? <coughs> Because again, I'm finding the derivative with respect to time, right? So I say 20 secant squared theta times d theta dt. Is equal to, now is there anything acting on x? No. <laughs> so really, I can just take the derivative of x, which is dx dt. Now, we are solving for d theta dt. So let's take this 20 secant squared theta and push it over to the other side. Right? Let's take that 20 secant squared theta 
and push it over to the other side. So d theta dt is equal to dx dt divided by 20, oops, I got my 20, 20 secant squared theta. Okay, what is dx dt? dx dt is what? Four. So I can replace that. So d theta dt is now equivalent to four over 20 secant squared theta. Now four twentieths. This is one fifth, right? So I'm gonna change that into one fifth times 1 over secant squared theta. Well, what is 1 over secant? Can we reduce 1 over secant? What is 1 over secant? I mean, secant in and of itself is 1 over cosine, right? So 1 over secant is just cosine. So d theta dt is really equal to 1 fifth times cosine squared theta. Now, the problem here is I don't know what theta is. But there's one piece of the problem that I haven't even talked about yet. I haven't even done anything with yet. This piece here. Okay, I haven't even done anything with that yet. Now, is there some way I can solve for cosine theta using the fact that this right triangle is going to be 15? Well, I'm going to have tangent theta again, right? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Could I solve for the hypotenuse when x is 15? Of course I can, right? I've got 15 squared plus 20 squared is equal to c squared. Well, that's a, that's a Pythagorean triple. That's a uh, product of 3, 4, 5, right? So 15 squared plus 20 squared is going to be equal to 25 squared, right? I mean, you can run the numbers. You can do it, but it's 25. I promise. Because it's a product of a 3, 4, 5. So we know this is 25. Okay, so now I can say, what is cosine theta? What is cosine theta? 20 over 25, right? We know cosine theta is 20 over 25, which reduces, obviously. So cosine theta is, divide by 5, 4 fifths. OK, so cosine squared theta is 16 20 fifths. Okay, now I can solve for d theta dt. So d theta dt is equivalent to 1 fifth of 16 20 fifths. So 16 over 125, right? Uh, 16 over, yeah, 25 times 5, yeah, 25, 5 quarters, dollar 25. 1.28. Exactly what I have on my paper. Uh, not 1.28, 0.128, excuse me. 0.128. And now let's label accordingly. It's d theta dt. What's my label on theta? Actually, it might be easier to say, what's my label on t? Well, time is just seconds here, right? Feet per <laughs> second, yeah. Uh, so it's 0.128 something per second. What's, what do you think my label is on theta? How do I measure theta? How do I measure an angle? 
Uh, but if I'm using this, I'm using, if I'm using this trig here, I'm using radians. Radians per second. It's always in radians. Rads per second. 0.128 radians per second. Why? Because my calculator was in, come on, buddy, come back up here, radian mode. So how fast is the searchlight changing? It's changing 0.128 radians per second. And for every second, it's changing about <coughs> an eighth of a radian. Pi over eight. <coughs> questions about that? Any questions there? All right. Well, I'm just going to let you work on the homework.